Good morning and welcome to Let's Talk Autism. I'm Nancy Allspot Jackson. I'm Shannon Penrod and we haven't done this in a minute. We have not. It's so great to be here in the studio with it's you, kind of Shannon. Freaky. It's kind of freaky. It's kind of wild. It is kind of freaky, but I'm loving it. Me too. Yeah, it's I mean, great. it's a different feel because yeah. you can hear each other breathe. And... Right. I've been on Zoom and yeah. yeah. I feel like for two and a half years, I've just cut you off on a regular basis. <laughs> Now I have to worry about what I look like from the waist down. I, well, and I frequently, these are shoes that I just put on <laughs> to sit here because I can't walk in these. Uh, and yeah. I have shoes that are just for the studio right. uh, because I can't, I can't walk in shoes. Right. Uh, but taking a page out of Oprah, Oprah okay. would, would stick her shoes. She would walk out in them. Right. And, and that would be it uh -huh. forever. Um, I'm not even, I can't even walk Early out. Early in, in her them. career, she wore cowboy boots because I shot she? promos with her way back in wow. the day. Yeah, when I, I worked in television. I can't wear cowboy boots. Yeah. I don't know how anyone That was can. her thing. That's too funny. But happy Thursday and happy holidays. We're yes. This is our December show. Yes. Last show of the year. Yeah. So we had to go out on a bang. So we, we have in a person great and, oh, yeah. show today. I'm so jazzed about our guests. Four guests. Four guests. They're all spectacular. Yes. We're going to get to them in a minute. Yeah. But first, we've got in the news. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And our first story, I cannot wait to see this documentary. Yeah. PBS to air documentary on first person with autism. Yeah, uh, this is called In a Different Key and it's by the amazing uh, team of Karen Zucker and John Donvan. They wrote a book of the same title called mm -hmm. In a Different Key where they mm -hmm. focused on different um, people across the years, uh, different stories. Right. Uh, and we loved that book. We've actually interviewed them twice uh -huh. on the show before, but they made this documentary and it came out during the pandemic. They had showings of it different places and all I kept hearing was how amazing it was, how emotionally gripping it was, how it was just stunning. And I could never get to any of the places where they were doing the, the screenings, so I haven't seen it. Have you seen it? I have not seen it. But, but I've, it, not, I've not heard a single person who saw it say anything other than raves. Can't wait to see it. Yeah. It is about uh, Donald Triplett, the first child to be diagnosed with autism. And uh, he was born over 90 years ago Amazing. in a small town in Mississippi. And what I love about this story is that the community has embraced and supported him yeah. with one resident declaring in the documentary, he's our guy. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? I think on so many different levels, first of all, to have this time capsule mm -hmm. of a different time. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but when Jem was diagnosed with autism, one of the questions that I was asking is, you know, where are all the elderly people with autism? Right. And I was terrified thinking that, you know, there and there are other diagnoses that we know that it shortens the lifespan. And, right. and, and I was asking everybody about that with autism and, and everybody's saying, well, we're not aware of that. We're not aware that, uh, but you're right, there don't seem to be a lot of senior citizens with autism around. Of course, there have been not only um, in a different key, but the book Neurotribes has uh, put some information in our hats to know that Look, these people have been around for a long time. There are senior citizens on the autism spectrum. Um, and to have this opportunity for them to have spoken to Donald while he's still here with us, absolutely amazing. Yeah. Can't wait I, to see it. I cannot wait to see it. So again, it's going to be on PBS. On, is it on the 18th, I think I saw? 13th. Oh, my gosh. 13th, that okay. much sooner. Uh, the 13th Very at soon. 9 p.m. Eastern time. Great. Can't wait be, to see it. be watching. Our next story actually comes out of a tragic situation, but it's uh, a tragedy turned into something positive. Out of Orange County, Florida, the Orange County Sheriff's Office um, set out to remind residents about a program uh, that allows emergency responders to better assist people with autism. And this announcement came after uh, less than a week after a five-year-old boy, unfortunately, was found dead in a pond near his yeah. Orange County, Florida home after his mother reported him missing. 
Yeah, I, I, I hate that this is born out of tragedy. I do the, too. The, the program existed before this, but I think right. it sort of revived it. And um, amazing that I can only imagine that that county sheriff was sitting there and feeling like, what is there that we can do? Let's hear it for Sheriff John Mena, Mina, yeah. Mena, I'm not sure yeah. how to pronounce his name, but um, he's the one that took it upon himself to start this program. And anyone in Orange County, Florida is invited to register for a free decal, which can be affixed to the front door of their home yep. or their car. And the decals indicate to an emergency responder that a person in the car or the home may not speak, respond to or comply with verbal demands, may hide, wander off, or may have no awareness of danger. Yeah, I, I, I will say, a lot of people out there may be feeling squeamish about identifying themselves or their child. Uh, and I do, I do hate that we have to get to that point. But look, we've seen so many times when police have responded to something and misinterpreted something that was happening. Right. And of course, we're all working to make police more aware of when you see this, it doesn't necessarily mean X, Y, and Z. Um, but I think that this is one way you at least have the choice. Mm -hmm. If you want to self-identify or identify for your child, um, that can come with potential other issues. Right. We want to make sure that if you are putting that in your car, that you're making sure that your child is safe so that predators... Right. It's always a crapshoot, right? right? But I, I respect that these folks are trying to do something positive and saying as police we want to be made aware. That seems like we're in the right column. To I me. agree. I mean, speaking from a mother who had a son who was an eloper. Yes. You know, Wyatt ran away frequently as yeah. a young child. It was terrifying. I'll never forget at LaGuardia Airport, him darting out in front of traffic. Mm. I'll never forget him running out our front door and hightailing it down the street towards the freeway. Um, and through ABA therapy, and social stories, we were mm -hmm. able to teach him not to elope, but it took a couple of years. Yeah, and it's a very scary time. Very. Jem only eloped from us once, but it took uh, probably 10 years off of my life. Right. So when I die, just think about, I could have had 10 more years. Okay. There we go. Uh, and then our last story, which was shared by one of our viewers uh, who brought it to my attention, Carrie Mallory Thompson, uh, said, hey, I can't wait to hear your take on this. Um, and I wanted to wait and talk about it with you because it's, it involves HBOT, right. which is the hyperbaric oxygen uh, tank uh, therapies. And of course, we've been talking about this for 12 years, Nancy. Yes. Um, and it, has, it hasn't been without controversy. I don't know, right. did I double negative that? There's been some controversy, that's mm -hmm. what I want to say. Mm -hmm. But there's a new study uh, that is out uh, from Tel Aviv University uh, that suggests that once again, we're going to reopen the conversation about the fact that hyperbaric oxygen uh, tank therapy might have some impact on inflammation in the brain when the individual is on the autism spectrum. Right, that it boosts the supply of blood and oxygen to the brain, thereby increasing brain function. Now, Shannon, this is important to point out. It is the hard shell, yes. not the soft shell. Yes. My experience was with the soft shell. We actually were fortunate enough at that point in our lives to purchase a soft shell yeah. hyperbaric, which we had in our family room. Yeah. And Wyatt and I did probably five dives a week wow. um, for a number of years. I believe anecdotally mm -hmm. that there was some increase in language for him, yeah. but uh, there has been research done that the soft shells are not effective. Yeah, in fact, um, when our son, there was a period of time where people started coming out and saying, listen, we think that autism has something to do with inflammation. And by the way, in the 12 years that have passed since then, there are more people saying inflammation is definitely a part of autism. Um, but so 
when Jem was diagnosed, everybody was saying HBOT, 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 it might be really helpful. And people were going and spending tens and thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. We did. Um, to purchase them to have them in their home. Because if you go to do dives, it's really expensive. Mm -hmm. So there was a study that was done, which was actually done by CARD, right. the Center for Autism and Related Disorders, where both of our sons were treated. Yes. And uh, they were recruiting us to be, I don't know if Wyatt if you, did this trial. Okay. Yeah, he did the study. And they recruited us and said, we want you to be a part of the study. I opted not to do it because I, what they were doing was putting the kids into tanks, soft shell tanks, and with a therapist, and they were going to continue to do therapy. So no time was going to be lost. They would be in the tank doing the therapy for two hours or whatever with the therapist. And some of the kids were going to be in a control group where they would be in a tank that wasn't having oxygen pumped in at a higher level. Um, those kids were going to be offered the, the HBOT at the end of the study, so they would get it one way or the other. But I was super paranoid about secondhand smoke right then hmm. because I was reading all these studies about the fact that secondhand smoke can, uh, you know, reside in people's clothes and that it can be really detrimental to somebody's health, especially if they have a young burgeoning brain. So I was saying to them, I was so difficult, you guys. I was saying, unless you can, you know, unless you get jumpers or something or say that they're all non-smoking therapists, I'm not having him go into a tank with somebody who potentially just had a cigarette. Mm. I'm not doing it. So I opted out okay. and we didn't participate. Uh, but a lot of people did participate, and we were all waiting with bated breath to see. And, of course, the study was published and said that there was no benefit. There's no measurable benefit that the kids in the control group learned just as much as the kids who were in the tanks. Right. And it decimated the HBOT community, and everybody was like, oh, well, then it has no positive effect. But... I never heard people, we've talked about it, but I never heard other people talking about the fact that, well, hospitals use hard shell HBOT for inflammation on a regular, right. that is burn mainstream. Burn victims, it's a huge treatment it's, for burn victims. It's mainstream for inflammation. Right. We know Dive the bends when you get it in diving. Yes. We, we know that it's beneficial for inflammation, mm -hmm. um, but people in hospitals don't use the soft shell. It's a much lower percentage of oxygen. So once again, and I said at the time, why isn't anybody doing this study on hard shell? And it was because there was no funding for it. I hope that this study will open the door to more funding. Yes. But it's really expensive. Really. So anyway, we'll see what happens. Okay. All right. Do we have Y Art? Yes, Y Art is at? next. Okay. So we wanted to take a minute. Talk, tell um, us about what we've got right. this week. I think the first painting, do we have lollipops first, Traven? Yes. Oh. So beautiful. Lollipops. He did this recently, which I thought was brilliant. For those of you who don't watch the show regularly, Wyatt is Nancy's son. He's 21 years old, mm -hmm. on the spectrum, and, you know, with a name like Wyatt Jackson, of <laughs> course we were expecting him to be a painter. And he has been since he was the teeniest, tiniest. Yes. He, and, and I have never seen somebody with so much purpose and drive paint in my life, even when he was younger. I love the videotapes you have of him being like two right. and painting. painting. In but, diapers. But look at this. And of course, both, you know, you and Reed both are, you know, um, were, were and are amazing artists, as were other people in your family. Thank you. You guys, a, a long lineage of uh, artists in your family. Right. So no surprise. And of course, you named him so that he had to be an artist. Right. The next painting, I think I, I have two versions of this painting. Okay. The first one, um, this is of a cat that was commissioned by a friend of mine. Before we leave the lollipops, oh. is this available or has somebody already purchased this? Um, it's a gift for somebody for Christmas. Okay. But he can do a painting similar okay. along the same lines. They're all unique. So if you're interested. But if you, know, yeah. if you, if you like if this, you want a lollipop painting, his painting can do it. are for sale and, and you can commission. And so the next one was a commission. And the next one was a commission. Um, it was from a friend of mine of, of a cat for a friend of hers. And this is the first oh, version of it. I just love this. That he did with very little input from his teacher. 
all I know, sent on his it, own. I sent and I love it, the chitchy face. I sent it to my friend. She said, can he try again? Okay. She didn't think it reflected the cat. Okay. The next version you'll see is with a lot of help from his teacher. Okay. Much more realistic. I kind of like the folkier I I one. love the chitchy <laughs> face on the first one, I got to say. But this is the one he did with the help of Paola, his teacher, giving him more instruction and kind of making it more realistic, which my friend was thrilled with. There we go. Yeah. Absolutely love that. And then did we have a third one? No, I think that's it. Oh, yes. I thought Two so. cats. I forgot. What is the name of these cats? I forgot. Uh, this is a friend of mine, her, her daughter's two cats that she commissioned. Amazing. Yeah. I just love the expressions he catches on the face. So you call this Y art. Y art. And he does many different things. I have some uh, cartons that yeah. he has uh, done on my wall mm -hmm. in my office. Uh, he does these amazing abstract, uh, they're, I don't, they're like color studies, but they're on recyclable cartons. Right. They're Starbucks just and super egg cool. cartons. Yeah. Super cool. And you can buy any of his work yeah. by, by going where? Well, we have, um, he has a Facebook um, page, Why Art Autism, um, and he has an Instagram page, Why Art Autism. I don't know if Traven has those, if he can put up, but I don't um, know if he does have they're both under, why, you can find them under Why Art Autism. And what a great, is there still time before There's Christmas? There's still time before Christmas. He's finishing up a commission this week. And then just one Christmas gift we have, and people can commission something for Christmas. He got several commissions for Christmas. Well, I mean, think about it, you guys, because if you need a gift for somebody and you know that they're in love with their cat or their dog, right. is there a better gift that you can give them? Right, people love it. And at it. the same time, you're helping to support because Wyatt is uh, an art student studying. Right, and, and all of the proceeds go to his lessons and his materials, which there aren't cheap. Yeah, of course not. Right. So, uh, but budding artist can't wait until the first time he's in a museum because I, I, be, I will be a From proud honorary auntie. Oh, no, it's happening. <laughs> it's hap I told you, I dreamt it years ago. I know you did. I, I had this dream that Nancy and Wyatt were in Paris or someplace in Europe. I some felt Paris. Someplace in Europe, yeah. Um, and, and you were wearing a very specific coat. So okay. when we're ready for that, I'm going shopping with All you right. for the coat. All right, I'm ready. Because, I'm... Uh, and your hair was really cool and bobbed. Okay. And, and Wyatt was was the proud painter and people were applauding him and years ago I had that dream. All right. Um, well, it's happening. Gonna, I'd love to see it's it been become written. a reality. Okay. All right, let's do our first guest. I'm so excited. Let our first two guests. Yes, yeah. our first two guests. Uh, with us we have Rabbi Jackie Redner. Mm -hmm. She served as Vista Del Mar's rabbi in residence for the past 16 years holds the title of Director of Spiritual Enrichment. What a nice title. Yeah. She oversees VISTA's Jewish Life Programs, which provides innovative Jewish educational programming and experiences designed for families with children, teens, and young adults with autism, both speaking and non-speaking, and other special needs. Rabbi Jackie, as she is known at VISTA, serves as chaplain for VISTA's residential population. Um, and uh, Rabbi Jackie received her ordination uh, from the Ziegler School of Rabbinic Studies at American Jewish University. But prior to rabbinical school, she worked as a registered occupational therapist for 10 years, trained in process-oriented psychology. And in December of this year, she'll receive a certification with the Center of Mind Body Medicine. She's also a wife and mother, so it's not enough, right? Wow, yeah. Yeah, so welcome to the show, Rabbi Jackie. And then we, yes, and we also have with her Ladan Sumek. Uh, she is the program director of Vista Del Mar's Jewish Life Program. She's a musician, an educator, and her work with vulnerable children and teens began 25 years ago when she was the music instructor for Vista's residential after school program. She's a professional musician specializing in vocals and piano, uh, which has been very helpful with her connecting with students uh, as a form of expression. She served as cantor for Vista's annual high holiday services and other Jewish holidays. 
um, and Vicious Jewish Life Programs under the leadership of Rabbi Jackie offers Jewish education and experiences to neurodivergent learners from tweens to young adults. So we are very happy to have them here. Yes, Thank welcome, ladies. Thank you so much for having Thank us. Thank you. Thank you. Thrilled to have you. Let's talk a little bit about, I mean, it's like where to begin, right? But tell us a little bit about, I, I know you guys hold very true to some core values at Vista Del Mar. Um, and so tell us about what the core values are for the Jewish Life programs. So um, let me say that, you know, if you're not familiar, for those of you that aren't familiar with Vista Del Mar, Vista began as a Jewish orphanage in, I think, 1908. And so today, we, we most of the children and families we serve are not Jewish, but we still have Jewish life programs. And, you know, Vista's indelible commitment to taking care of and nurturing um, society's most vulnerable children and families has remained the same throughout all the years. And so Jewish Life Programs is kind of a niche program there. I would say um, the it's not a um, it's not a treatment program. So in that sense, it maybe is a little bit different than um, like our residential uh, care programs um, and our schools and and that kind of thing. Of course, they're not uh, they're not treatment program. The school is not a treatment program either, but. There's children that come there that have emotional and behavioral issues that they need extra support for. Um, and so I don't know if that answers your question, mm -hmm. um, Shannon, but that's, um, you know, that, that's Vista's mission and, um, and it remains. Ladan, would you like to address the kinds of services you provide? Yeah, so we have a, uh, first of all, I want a lollipop. That was ah! what I was doing. <laughs> And a cat. Uh, we, ha we have um, a program, our learners um, on the spectrum, as you know, there are all kinds of different abilities. And so our students, we try to approach our students with a, a lot of flexibility. So for example, we have each class has art we start each class with an art project because we find, as you know, that that's a wonderful way for all students to express themselves. And then we go into music and then we have a theme that we uh, cover for each year. And then we break that theme down into each class. But we really try to be very flexible with how we teach. It's very like in the moment, each learner has their own style and we really are very sensitive uh, to being able to connect at a moment's notice with any learner at any time. So that's very important to how we do what we do. Um, and I, can I piggyback off her? Yeah. So, you know, we have our, um, like our Jewish studies program, which is called Neskadol, and uh, which means great miracle. And um, we also, I, I want to just say, I want to honor Elaine Hall because she actually started that program mm. like 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. I've been working with it almost from the beginning and, you know, came to end up directing that program. But we do um, Jewish holiday celebrations. We have high holiday services, which are free to the community. We have bar and bat mitzvah tutoring. Um, we have a monthly virtual Shabbat service. We have service learning um, opportunities through our blessing exchange program, mostly bringing uh, Shabbat experiences to seniors and um, really try and provide our, our students with places that they can be of service um, to others. And I think, you know, you had asked me about uh, Vista's values. And I think, you know, one of the things that we're thinking about, Ladan and I are always thinking about is, you know, how do we create a sense of inclusion and a space of inclusion, which allows our, our students to share their light with the community. Um, and so that they, they and their families um, can feel our students essential and necessary presence 
in the whole of the community. And I think that's really, really important to us. We're able to tailor make our classes. We're able to tailor make a bar and bat mitzvah experience, this you know, coming of age um, ceremony. Everything we do is an opportunity to allow our students to lead, to be seen. I would just say like at our high holiday services, which Vista's had for many, many years, I would open that with, you know, the community that's gathered here today creates the heart in which the service takes place and whatever happens here is okay. Some of our friends with autism, particularly those who are um, non-speaking, may sometimes make noises and that's okay. We can hold whatever happens here. And it just, you know, there's an exhale. Parents know then they can be there and they don't have to worry. We're really trying to create a refuge for not only our um, students, but also their, their families. So I just wanted to add, um, add that in. And yeah, um, who, who is eligible for the program? You talked about some of the types of kids you have, but who is eligible? I mean, the program is designed for um, children with autism and other neurodiverse abilities and special needs, but anybody can join. And we do sometimes have neurotypical uh, children join as well. And um, we would love to have a younger program if we get um, young students that come we will create a program for them but generally now it's like i would say 10 to you know 25 i think is our probably our oldest um, student now and because we have enough staff on hand and the nature of our classes and really the personal attention that we're able to give it doesn't seem to matter so much um, they seem less attached to each other's age than perhaps they would um, in a regular school setting. And so you talked a little bit about the high holidays, but uh, I imagine with, I mentioned that you were going to be on the show today and I said that we would touch on Hanukkah um, and wondering if what the plans are that you have for Hanukkah and when that perhaps the public might want to participate in. That would be great. We actually have a lovely Hanukkah program planned. We were going to do it outside, uh, but because it's so cold and because the COVID numbers are rising, we're going to be doing it virtually. But we have something very special planned for our families and for anyone that's coming is that we are putting together a happy Hanukkah kit. So it will include a dinner, it will include a, a mini menorah, it will include latkes, it will include songbooks, a gift for the child, or the learner. It's a complete package that they can come and pick up before the virtual service that we're having. And then we're going to have a great time online. When the, when the pandemic first started, we had our first Hanukkah online and it was a lot of fun. It did create a lot of intimacy in a certain way that we can't have in person. So we really tried to you know, make the best of it and really make it very special because like Rabbi Jackie mentioned, we try to make it as easy as possible on our parents. Parents are overwhelmed, it's stressful, there's a lot going on, and we really, um, I feel like we support the parents as well as the students. And so everything that we do, including this Hanukkah, we make it really simple and easy and fun. And we have several of these programs throughout the year, so we've really become a community. You know, when we come together, it's, it's, it's whole. You know, Amazing. and it's very special. So mm -hmm. where do they need to go to find out? Because the fact that it's virtual, that means that you don't have to be local to Los Angeles to attend that Hanukkah. Uh, you really could be anywhere in the world. And I don't know, I, um, I just have to say that I have found the Jewish community in, in general so much more welcoming of our kids than anywhere else that I've been. And in, in our lives, you know, when my son was young and first diagnosed, everybody was saying, you know, you better, I, I will admit that we didn't have a church that we went to and everybody was saying, you need to have a spiritual community around you. And we were going everywhere. And um, my son probably went to more Hanukkah celebrations than he did to anything else because we would get kicked out of everywhere else. 
We mm -hmm. never ever got kicked out when we were doing something that was part of the Jewish community. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that was uh, a very interesting thing for us. So uh, I- It's so touching. <laughs> it really is. I can tell what Dan is touch and I'm so touched that that was your experience. That is, and that was so my son's happy. experience. Um, I, I keep drawing a blank, but what is the wonderful place that's right at the 405, the museum? The Skirball? The Skirball. Skirball. We practically lived at the Skirball, mm -hmm. and, and there was one time when uh, we tried to have a very open spiritual home where we, didn't, we weren't putting any beliefs on our son. And I remember when he was first able to be verbal, and I was sort of describing for him, because we had gone through the Jewish life exhibit where you could see what it was like for people in the 30s living in New York City if they were part of the Jewish community. He loved it. Uh, we also, I still love and go to the Noah's Ark exhibit there whenever I possibly can. But anyway, and I'm from back east, so there is, there is sort of, uh, you can find a New York home uh, at the Skirball as well. But anyway, they, um, I was, we were driving home and I said to him, okay, well, you know, there's these beliefs and there's these beliefs. Where do you think you fit in? And he loves Jewish music better than anything else on the face of the planet still. And, and he was like, oh, well, you know, I'm clearly Jewish. <laughs> um, because that, because he was like, yeah, no, those are my people. Um, mm -hmm. Which I thought was adorable. And he had spent more time in that community, to be honest, because he was welcomed there. And, and uh, can I tell you how many Christian churches and the YMCA that we got kicked out of? Don't get me started. Um, and I would always go, really? Is that how we're going to, that's, you know, okay, thank you. Got your so number. Let me tell you that this coming Sunday, um, you can go online. Uh, Jewish Life Program is Vista Del Mar. If you just look up Vista Del Mar Child and Family Services and you go even to the main page of the website, if you scroll down, you'll see the flyer for Hanukkah. Okay, great. Um, if you want to come if you want to get food please get in touch with us immediately okay um, but ladan's numbers on the flyer okay but the other thing i wanted to tell you i know you want to speak one second ladan is that mm. on the 17th we're having um a winter concert where we're going to be having jewish music and uh, hanukkah music and christmas music and we have people coming from beit teshuva we have people coming gospel from music gospel music uh our Jew, kids from Jewish Life programs and some of our alumni will be singing. Uh, Vista's residents will be singing. So Tell me that is, date again because my son that, will want to see that. <laughs> great. Um, I'm hoping Craig Taubman is supposed to come. Um, Craig, come. <laughs> He's getting back that day. Um, it's on December 17th at 7 p.m. in our beautiful new uh, Gloria Kaufman Performing Arts Center. Oh, where, where are you located physically? On Motor Avenue okay. um, in Los Angeles um, at the 10 Freeway. Got so it. it's Motor Avenue and the 10 Freeway. Okay. 32 Maybe freeway. there's somewhere we can put a link. Do you have like a... On a yes, Facebook if page? you'll send it's us the link, we we'll, we'll put it in the, the notes underneath the show on, uh, on YouTube and for the podcast. So if you'll send okay, us that link, we'll do that link, for we'll Hanukkah it. And, for the, and for that. Awesome. It would be great. All great. are welcome. We are so inclusive. Everybody is welcome. We love to have. I love that. I love it more too. and more people. Yeah. And I think you should expose your kids to everything. I agree. Uh, because that's how we need the world to be, right? Right. Um, but I, uh, before I want you we to go, come to high holidays next year too. I, I love it. I want it. you to come to high holidays. Bring because there, it's it, there's a place for everybody there because there's because Vista is not primarily a Jewish agency anymore in the sense that most of the kids and and families that get our services are not Jewish, we have our kids involved in our programming, um, our residents that live on campus, and they become part of a choir, and staff are there, and it, it, we have a, the Life Choir, who, who's this kind of uh, beautiful choir led by H.B. Barnum that's more gospel, and they sing in our last service, and it, it's just our, our kids with autism and our participants, they're all leading different parts of the service, and it's wonderful and warm and welcoming, and love you it. would be most welcome. Anyone I would love You cannot be in a bad it. mood. Right. Once there you get go. there, whatever weight is on your shoulders will get lifted. That's my experience with every class and everything that we I'll do. I'll take it. So uh, yeah. we have to ask for, your, for these kinds of things and for the programs. 
Um, if somebody is interested, is there a website that they can go to where they, I, we're going to include a link, but is there a website that they can go to um, to find out all the things that you do? Vistadelmar.org. Okay. And then you go into the about, you go to that little, and it'll say Jewish life. Okay. And then you click on Jewish life and you'll get there. Great. You can also call me at 310-836-1223, extension 209, or you can call Ladan. You're going to have to say that again slowly so that people can catch that. 310-836-1223, extension 209. Okay. And people are going to ask, is there a cost to attend some of these things or to be involved in the programs? So I'm going to answer that, Ladan. Is that okay? Yes. <laughs> um, first of all, Ladan and I have worked together for years too, and I years. trust her deeply and love her deeply. So anyone can come to anything. We will make accommodations. I can tell you that our Hanukkah program is $10 per attendee, but you're getting a, a kosher dinner that's going to include latkes and dessert and chicken and uh, vegetable. You're going to get a menorah. You're going to get gifts. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our events are free. Our Friday monthly, um, every first Friday uh, program is free. Our high holiday services are free. Um, many, many of the things that we do are no cost, and we will work with any family. No one is ever turned away. There's scholarship money available, and um, we want. If you want to be there and be part of our community, we want you there, and oh, it's nice. important to us. So welcoming. Well, you two Absolutely. are definitely doing God's work with our children, and we are deeply appreciative of your efforts. Oh, are you kidding? The, these students open up my heart and brighten up my day each and every time. I mean, it's a, it's a privilege and an honor. We, we have some beautiful, beautiful people that we're working with. Well, it's a privilege to have had this time with you guys. We hope that people will check out all that you're doing at vistadelmar.org. Trey just had it on the screen a second ago. But thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you, ladies. Thank Thanks you. for happy, having us. Yeah, happy holidays. Happy, thank holidays. You. happy holidays to you as Thank well. you both for all the amazing work you do and uh, for the sacred homes you provided for your kids and for all that you do and for the community and the love you share, and it's just really beautiful and also how real and authentic you are, and it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. We're going to take a little break. A little break. Because we've got guests that we're going to bring we in. so to excited. The studio. My friend Isabella Hoffman, yes. such an accomplished actress and dramatic coach, and her incredible son, yeah. Atticus Baldwin, who has talents of his own that we're going to talk about. Yes, absolutely. So uh, stick with us. We're going to be right back. Hello, fellow activists. Last week, I introduced you to step five of the 10 Steps to Empowerment, Shore Up Spiritually. Let's talk more about finding ways to do that how to find out what lifts your spirit, feeds your soul, and make it a practice. That practice is different things for different people. It could be the practice of meditation, of prayer, of community worship, or serving others. But it's the practice that will give you hope and faith and strength for the journey ahead, for the marathon journey of raising a child with autism. I get inspired every day by the families of children with autism that I come into contact with. Like the parents of the nonverbal child who have not given up hope that that child will speak one day. Or the grandparents who should be enjoying their retirement but instead are joyfully raising their adult grandchild with autism. Or the mother who is fighting for services for her daughter while her marine husband is fighting a battle to keep our country safe. They all inspire me. My grandmother, Diddy, who is an angel who still guides me every day, had this quote inscribed in her Bible. I sought my soul, but my soul I could not see. I sought my God, but my God eluded me. I sought my brother, and I found all three. I think I'm finally starting to grasp the meaning of that. So feed your soul, lift your spirit, and until next time, keep the faith.
This message is for President-elect Donald Trump. I'm Shannon Penrod, a proud autism mom, so there's a lot of things I want you to know about autism. But for today, let's just focus on how many people are on the autism spectrum. Did you know that 2% of the population here in the United States is estimated to be on the autism spectrum? Now, I know 2% doesn't sound like that much, really, right? But it's actually quite significant. In fact, we're going to show you how significant with the help of my friend Rick, who happens to also be an autism dad. He's going to dye 2% of my hair to match yours. Okay, let's do this. You can't ignore it. The pain of comparison, yes, I know it well. It is never fun to compare your child with other children because that's not easy when your child has a difference, such as being on the autism spectrum. And if you have a child with autism, we have the joy of comparing our child not only to neurotypical children, but also to other children with autism. You have to remember that your child is your child. We love them because they're our children and their job is to be a child and our job is just to parent and love them and help them as much as we can. When we hear about some child doing something that our child isn't doing yet or may not do in the long run, it's pretty difficult. And I can tell you, milestones are a hard one. The graduations, the birthday parties, you have to remember you can get through this. One of the best ways to do it, fun. You have to have a group of safe people that you can go to, hang out, that love your child, do something fun together. One of the best solutions is to kind of think about where we are then. Maybe it's time to kind of look at a different situation or a different intervention. So you might look at a different school, you might look at something you've never tried before uh, to uh, be a therapy or a biomedical intervention for your child. Also. Disability has always been seen as a form of wisdom in some of the world's great faiths and religions and philosophies. They have a lot to teach us. Our children are beautiful people. They affect people different ways and they show us really what human nature is all about. So when you feel that pain of comparison, just know that your child is a special person. And I'm sitting here to tell you, there are children out there, girls and boys, young adults, older adults who do things that people never thought they would do. They're going to surprise you. You will have those moments. So be assured that your time is coming to be that one that everyone's happy for. Parent to parent, you've got an IEP meeting coming up and you're asking yourself, how do I prepare for this? Well, there are a couple of things that you can do to ensure that this IEP is going to be less stressful. You're not even going to have to carry the Tums anymore. So the first thing that you're going to do is make sure that all of the discourse that happens between you and the school happens in writing. So even when you let them know that you're going to be attending the meeting, make sure you do it in writing. You can send an email. Lawyers tell us that those count. The next thing that you're going to do in that email where you respond and say, yes, I am am coming to the meeting, make sure that you notify the school that you're going to be bringing a tape recorder. 
You need to do that within 48 hours of the meeting and do it in writing. So why not put it in the email that you're responding that you're going to come. And then make sure that you get on your best behavior because you're going to be as nice as possible during this IEP. Remember, being nice is what gets the job done even when you're feeling frustrated. And something that you can also do for, before the IEP meeting is to request that all of the reports for anything that they're wanting to present to you about your child or any testing that they did with your child be given to you in writing 48 hours before the meeting. Not all schools will comply, but if you've asked for it in writing, at least you'll have a record of it. And if you do get those documents, you'll be more prepared than you could ever dream. An IEP doesn't have to be stressful as long as we're prepared. We all want our children to eat healthily. I gotta do the U-turn around the, the thing? Okay. So Kelby, do I want the north entry or the south, or does it matter? Okay. Are we doing curbside bag check? Which way, Kelby? Left? Yeah. Kelby, can I go through the T? Yeah, I, I have a toll tag. Can you go through the T? Okay. What do you do that like you could just have spend two hours doing and have it suck all your time. Oh, I like to look up research, interesting research articles on animal behavior. <coughs> Found a really interesting, really interesting uh, European papers on how wolves are different than dogs that I read last oh. week that were very, very interesting. Very cool. Because I've always talked about a brain can be more social emotional or a brain can be more cognitive. Yeah. And the wolf turns out to be more cognitive. And we've bred the dog to be more social emotional. How fascinating is that? Very, very interesting. And wolves are very good at watching another wolf solve a problem. We were talking a little bit about television before, and I cannot believe that what you said to me, what, what, what you like to watch on television. Star Trek. I was a Star Trek fan when I was a teenager. I liked the Star Trek Next Generation. I was watching that when I was working on my PhD in the 80s. And so what Total Star Trek fan. What's your favorite series and what's your favorite character and what's your favorite uh, Mr. episode? Mr. Spock was my favorite character. Love it. And uh, what's favorite episode? This well, guy is going to hate. There's a lot of good. My favorite Star Trek movie was the one with the whales. Yes. Yeah, really mine too. I really like that Star Trek movie. And so sad that we lost Leonard Nimoy this year. Yeah. So, are you, I didn't know that you like to watch television. Do you like to go to the movies, too? Oh, yeah. So, I went and saw Gravity. There's certain movies that have to be seen in a theater, like yeah. Gravity and Avatar. Yeah. I went to see Inside Out in the theater. That, I really liked that movie. What did you think of that? I liked it. I think it, I think about how all the emotions interact. I gotta be honest, I had said after that that I thought that it was going to be a great tool for, for people to show kids on the autism spectrum about perspective taking. Yeah. About what it's like in other people's heads. Well, no, it's more like how the emotions inside your own head sort of conflict with each other. Yeah, absolutely. I love the Wizard of Oz, and I love the idea of the, wizard, of the ruby slippers. She had the way back home, she just didn't know she had it. Yeah. You see, and I think that's a metaphor for a lot of things. A lot of people have the ruby slippers, but they don't know they have them. They don't know they got the key that can open up the door to a lot of really great stuff. So what would you say was your ruby slipper? Well, I had when some opportunities came up, like when I designed those dip vats, um, that was a major uh, breakthrough for my business. And when the head of the feed yard came up to me and asked me if I'd do it, I said, give me three weeks. You know, a lot of people would have been too scared to walk through the door. Now, this is pre-internet. And I knew it would take me three weeks to get some of the information I needed, especially on concrete reinforcement, to design the dip vats. But you did it. I did it. I was on the phone the next day to the USDA to get the drawings on the concrete reinforcement. Wow. So I, I want to journey back to childhood for just a second and talk about friends, because a lot of times people ask about friends. Who was your best friend? When I was in elementary school, one of my best friends was a girl named Eleanor. And she was the first girl in elementary school to get the tape wood shop instead of cooking. And I was the second girl in our school to get the tape wood shop. So we like to make stuff. It's all about making stuff. And I had good friends in high school. Even though I got bullied and teased, I got friends who shared interests. Riding horses together, doing electronics together, doing model rockets together, doing stuff together with other um, 
with other students. So you found, like your mom says about, found, you found your tribe. Yeah, and yeah. you've got to get them in yeah. doing things with other people. And you did a lot of theater, and you, did you sing as a kid? Yeah, I did. I, one of the problems I was singing is I couldn't synchronize my rhythm with somebody else's rhythm. Do you still have a hard time doing that? I still have a hard time doing that. Because we were, we were going to ask you if you wanted to sing something in the car with us. Well, I think maybe we'll skip there. <laughs> Great question. But the one question people always ask us is they want to know if you've ever been in love. No, never have. And and you don't feel like you're missing anything. I've seen so much turmoil in so many marriages that I haven't really seen a situation that would be a good model. And yet you gave me really good marriage advice. Because I'm a good problem solver. You have to like take the problem and cut it down. And in engineering, you have to find the root cause of a problem. What do you think is your secret to your success as a teacher? Well, presenting things really clearly. That's really important, making things interesting. Yeah. I think it's also important that it's something in a class that you know, a student can take home and use. I teach a class in cattle behavior and handling, and I've got a lot of students that are pre-vet that are going to go in the dog and cat, probably won't be handling any cattle. But I said, you want to design this corral system because it's visual problem solving. You have to figure out how to do it. It's not a cookbook. And then I have my internet project where they can pick out anything in animal behavior, and I make them dig into a narrow subject that I have to approve because I want them digging into Google Scholar and PubMed Science Direct and the other databases. They got to learn how to find stuff online and I'm finding about two thirds of the students are not very good at that. How about this, Make Magazine. <laughs> this is the kind of thing that a lot of kids on the spectrum need to be doing, the cool stuff in here. Really Make Magazine is going to love that you Make did magazine. that. Make Magazine. That's a It'll wonderful magazine. And I'm, okay, yes, yes and, and they're resurrecting old satellites from mission control and then abandoned McDonald's. <laughs> That's it. the kind of stuff I really like. These are the kind of magazines we need to get in the school. Make Absolutely. Magazine, Business Week, Science, Nature, Wired. we got to show kids out there. There's all kinds of super interesting yeah. stuff out there. Open but if the they brains. don't see it, then they don't know about it. I, I like night. to geek out on construction oh, sites. Yeah. I like to salivate over all the equipment <laughs> they've got that we didn't have, like really cool man lifts and you know, nice scaffolding. We didn't have any of that stuff. You didn't? No, we didn't. What did you guys have? Horrid, A compass? Horrid ladders that were really dangerous <laughs> is what we have. Step out. Yep. Oh. We have to get the mic back from you too. Oh, you took it off already. Oh, it's attached to mine. Welcome back to Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy. And now we have two very dear friends here. We have a full house. We do. <laughs> Isabella Hoffman is an actress best known for her roles on Jag, Dear John, Providence, Beggars and Choosers, pretty much any show that has been on television in the last 20 years, everything from ER to Grey's Anatomy. She's also well known as the mother of the talented Atticus Baldwin. Atticus Baldwin is a self-advocate and a performer specializing in vocal impersonations. Maybe you could do a few of those for us today. He has performed with The Miracle Project and Spec Labs. It's so good to have you guys here. Thank you for having us. And I feel like that didn't even cover half of the things that you guys have done. We had to minimize because we could be here all week yeah, talking about so, how many things you guys have done in your lives. But so happy to be here. There's a segment that Nancy and I used to do all the time called Autism Family Portraits, where we take an opportunity to talk with a family about autism in their lives. And so we wanted to start by asking you guys a little bit about your origin story, how autism came into your lives and, hmm. and, and what that was like for both of you. Should I take this one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I, uh, well, ours is a, a, a unique story. Atticus was born at 26 and a half weeks. 
and uh, he's had about 11 surgeries and things like that. So we spent three months in the hospital wow. when we were first born. So many things happened during that time. Um, our uh, experience may also be unique, but I'm going to reference it uh, because I think it's important is that his father at the time too was struggling with um, drug addiction. And so that left me by myself mm, yeah. um, when all this was happening for the most part. So um, that being said, the reason I'm bringing that up is because because of his prematurity and because of all the things that were, were going on with his body, et cetera, et cetera, the autism was not a prominent thing. What I, there was so much else going on. Yeah. It was hard to pinpoint. So um, we had physical therapy and things like that. And when it did come up, uh, a little bit later, when he was a toddler, um, I also noticed a, a little bit of a change after, you know, the shots. They wanted to give him the four-in-one shot mm -hmm. uh, because he was poked so many times. He's had Broviac tubes. They would poke him every day. It was a very, very hard time. I'm surprised that he doesn't have, well, he probably does have dinosaur memories of that. Mm. Um, he's a warrior. Yeah. He's a warrior but I think all kids with autism are warriors yeah. for that matter you know it takes a lot to navigate this world when you are autistic and people don't know how to deal with that That's um, true. yep true. and and so he was very late in getting diagnosed partly because we had moved up to Canada and there was not a big uh, medical community there uh, that we could turn to for, for that um, because we were not citizens at that time. But, um, and partly because I think I was in denial. Mm. They attributed a lot of what was happening with Atticus to sensory integration and it wasn't until uh, he went to this little school in Crescent Beach called the Tiny Y and who was your teacher there? Do you remember her name? Your very first school experience. But she said, you know, I think he might be autistic. I think. And I thought, no. Her name was, was, was Mrs. Wags. Mrs. Wags. We love her. <laughs> That's great we that you loved, can remember yes, that. Yes. Well, he's my encyclopedia. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and uh, so, so a lot of time went on. Yeah. And when we moved back, to the States and Los Angeles. There was still another time when we d I, I didn't do the diagnosis. I didn't get him diagnosed until he was 10. Mm. Okay. Because he was also in, um, I mean, he was also in Waldorf. We, I, I put him in the Waldorf system. There's not anything that they don't like to diagnose people because they don't want to use it as a crutch and things like that. They want everybody to be where they are and they try to support that the way that they can in that way. Um, but let's face it, our kids might need a little more scaffolding. Um, so I, I did it later. And I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but I'm putting it out there because parents are afraid. I know that parents are afraid. We don't want to face those things. but. When you're ready, just, just get over the fear of it and go in there and see what you can do so you can find the support systems that you need. Mm -hmm. I had support systems, but they were for physical therapy and things like that. Now, let's talk about what you did, what, what therapies and interventions you did with Atticus and what worked for you. Um, at what point? Because when we finally got into, and that's why I wanted him diagnosed, into the regional center system, which is what I highly recommend, they have things that you can choose from. We did all kinds of things. He's had a behaviorist uh, and a uh, mentor, uh, personal assistant, friend, family member, Ryan, since yeah. he was about 10 yeah. or 11 when we first started to get, you know, to have that support. We had what? Um, 
Am I talking too much? No, 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 no. It's not the, I was just, is it, can, can I say something? Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, there was my friend, uh, uh, Ryan Hetrick. Uh, I first met him when I was like, I think I was like um, 11 or 12. Um, and then there was a few other friends. Of me. I don't know, but you had social skills. Yeah. Um, we, we had adaptive skills. We had things like that. Yeah. Um, we found places like the Ed Asner Family Center. We found places like Spec Lab later. Yeah. But we also went here. We also made the project. Mm -hmm. Actors for Autism. And also, you know, in, my, in the high, in Village Glen High School, there was the high school I went to. There was also a social skills class that they had. Yeah, well, and that was all later. But but you know we kept build we keep building on it. We're still doing it, yeah. and now we're trying to go through the self determination program. Right. Yeah. Yeah, which is going to be great because I'm do that too, Isabella. Yeah, you know I mean if you know one person with autism, you know one person with autism. So self determination or being able to mold the clay yeah. of what kind of things you need for your young adult or your child is really important because the most important thing, and I'll say that, is for me to get alongside or any parent to be able to get alongside of their child and, and try to come from a place of understanding there. Yeah. Johnny Seitz once said that to me, that his mom would she said you know he's an older he's older and people who are older like Temple Grandin I mean they didn't have anything in place yeah. and um, and he said that his mother used to if he dropped an egg on the kitchen floor in order to see what would happen his mom sort of did the same thing just to try to get a basis of understanding for what where might this be coming from because every behavior has a root cause That's right and you need to find out what the root cause is. There's a reason that these kids and young adults do what they do. There's a reason behind it. Dig around, find it. Yeah. And the way that you can find it is by getting support. Get support, get what you need. It's gonna take some of the weight off of you. It's going to help you in, in ways that you, you can't even imagine, but get, get, in, get in the system, let them, grow and blossom with your help and guidance, but have a support system in place, get an advocate, get the scaffolding, get what you need. Oh, oh mom. What? You don't have to whisper, because we're, look, we're on, we're on camera. Oh, right, okay. That's what do you need? Saying. But you still want to whisper? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, just one quick thing. Okay, all right. Oh, Atticus wants me to mention that I was in Princess Diaries too. Okay. Oh, very I'm good. Glad Sorry, we <laughs> left <laughs> that out. Uh, but I, speaking of that and the fact that you're a performer and have been a working actor for mm -hmm. all this time, and it, uh, and and genetically, you know, on both sides of his family, that, he comes. That one was from, a toughie. I actually had to quit a show when he was in the hospital uh, because I was kind of left. I can imagine that's a I, hard I mean, career to have. Our circumstance, my circumstances were slightly different, and I don't want to. I mean, I'm not putting out anything that isn't public knowledge. By you know, Daniel has talked about his um, uh, struggles with drug addiction, but that caused me when he did come back. I was due to go back and do Homicide. Uh, yeah. Daniel was no longer on the show, but I did not feel that I could leave him. Yeah. With Atticus. Yeah. I couldn't do it, so I had to call up and, and say, I'm happy to be asked back to the dance, but I can't yeah. leave my child here. Yeah. yeah well, just you're for not our alone. listeners that don't know, Atticus is from his father, is Daniel Baldwin oh, yeah. from a Hollywood royalty family, the Baldwin brothers. Yeah. I don't know if we have a picture of Atticus with his uncle. I don't know if you can. With, and with pull, Nancy. And with me on the red carpet at <laughs> oh, Denim and Diamonds. Uh, um, I don't know whether Trayvon can find that photo, but we honored the Baldwin brothers at Denim and Diamonds for Autism a number of years ago, and you mm -hmm. were on the red carpet. Oh, there, yeah. Yeah. there we Look are. Look at you. Look at yeah. how fancy schmancy you are. I <laughs> know. Yeah. It's a great photo. And, and there's Billy. Young yeah, there, faced there was, you are there, Yeah, there, there was me and, and, and you, and then 
my dad and my uncle Billy and yeah, amazing. Yeah. When I was there, I also met Nolan Gould, star yeah. of Modern yes. Family. Yes, that's right. Love that's him. right. Yeah, but, that is a but is, so is you a great have uh, thespians on both sides of the family. It runs through your blood. Yeah. Genetically, and I was saying to you before we started that the first time I met you, I had gone to see Nancy's son Wyatt in a production done by the Miracle Project, and it was a really good production, as they always are, and why it was really wonderful. But uh, there were two Atticuses in the show, and I have a son named Jem, so we thought that was really interesting. Then we watched the show, and I remember afterwards saying, who's that one kid? <laughs> because, and I was, you, because you were so amazing in the show. You were fantastic. You did a great job. And I job. said, who is that kid? And they said, oh, that's Atticus Baldwin. And I was like, oh, okay, don't know him. And they were like, like uh, Baldwin, Baldwin. Uh, and I went, oh, it's genetic. Uh, <laughs> you, you are heir, heir to yeah. that acting throne. Um, so I was super impressed, and now I've seen you do many things. You're very yeah. talented. And you specialize in vocal impersonations. Can you do one for us, just one? Um, yeah, 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 I, I, I could easily, um, <clears throat> let, me, let me think. Okay, uh, think about it. I don't want to put you yeah. on the spot if you're not ready to do it. Is that your uh, phone? Uh, somebody's phone is ringing. Somebody's is phone. It's, okay. it's mine. It's, it's fine. Uh, I know that in particular, there's a character from Sesame Street that you do on a regular basis. Uh, I don't want to pressure you either, but if you wanted to well, do somebody. I have well, favorites too, but yep. who's uh, well, Yes. Well, well, if you want, I, I can easily do a pretty good, you know, Bert and Ernie voice. Okay. okay. We'd love to hear that. Yeah, I, I can do a lot of voices like, um, let me let me see if I can think of one. I, I'm, uh, oh, okay, here's what's going on. Hi. Hey, Ernie. Hi, Bert. Uh, Ernie, what are you doing? Well, I'm playing house, Bert. And, um, you know, I, I basically, I, when, I, when I grew up watching Sesame Street as a child, I kind of listened to the characters' voices, and I kind of kept saying some of those lines in my head, as well as, like, with some other shows I used to watch as a kid. Yeah. And um, and I've, I, I could do easily a lot of voices, not just from Sesame Street, but from other shows and, and movies. And... And speaking of which, I'm actually in the process of potentially getting a job on a certain TV show. Don't, mm -hmm. let's, don't well, jinx I, it. I, okay, well, I, I, okay, well, well we'll have to we have you. We we'll tell, have to announce it. You're, yeah, we're not supposed to announce it yet, but you're going to have to let us know so we can tell everybody. Oh, okay, but oh, hold on a second. <laughs> Talk amongst ourselves here. No, um, no, no, no. It's still, still, you should, you should. You just you can you can talk about I think you can talk about until something happens legally we should probably not talk about anything oh, right. but okay. but um, what what you can talk about is how you are uh, being a creative person and doing writing and performing and playing music. He has perfect pitch, by the way. Mm. Wow. Shello. Yeah. Wow. A gift that I did not know uh, was there. And when did you find that out? Um, <laughs> when we, he's a big Cats aficionado, and I needed to get him, when the uh, VHS tape wore out, I, ha I got him a, a DVD. And uh, when he started listening to or watching the cat, Cats the Musical, the 1990... Yeah, the 1998 uh, video version that, that they did. And he kept telling me it was wrong. And because it's a puzzle, as we all know, I, I kept trying to say, well, I, I have a pretty good ear. I, I sing and I do the, all this stuff. I said, no, it's the same, it's the same show, same actors, same music. It's, yeah. it's wrong. What ultimately happened was... It was pressed. The DVD was pressed a half step lower. Yes. Yeah, so, wow. so the so the the music was like in the wrong key. Oh, wow. Didn't like match like on the on the it's VHS amazing. copy. But, that but, but 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 they actually have that the the original versions, as well as that unfortunate. Ver DVD press version, but they, they have it on, on, on the internet, like on YouTube, <laughs> Daily Motion. And of course, I, I do enjoy a lot of musicals, not just Cats the Musical, but I also like Sweeney Todd. Uh -huh. and, um, That's one of my favorites. Of course, too, I, 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 I really did enjoy Sesame Street, a voiceover right. show. I also enjoyed Arthur and, and a few other. Voice over And what show. about Thomas? Oh yes, I, I still I, I really do enjoy Thomas and Friends. Yeah. 
Yeah. So here's some trivia for you. When I got out of college, the first thing that I did was I was working in the Broadway theater community in New York City, and the first show that I was assigned to work on was Cats. Mm. So uh, not as an actor, but in production, I worked on, on Cats uh, for their office managers. Yeah. Uh, and so I have all this Cats memorabilia from way back Ooh. when, from the I, 80s. That so, actors wow. would like to yeah, see that. Yeah, sometime you'll have to come My friend to my Harry house. Groner originated the role of Monkey Strike. Oh, you know, absolutely, Harry. yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I gotta say, Harry was pretty good, but, but I gotta say, but I gotta say one thing in terms of Broadway <laughs> stage actors overall, yes. I gotta say, the actor uh, Michael Gruber, who who played Amonka Strap in the 1998 uh -huh. v video production of Cats, a musical, I gotta say, Michael was spot on. He was like really awesome as okay. as as, as Monka Strap. No 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 offense to Harry Groner. Oh, he was very no, good. Oh no, none taken, and I'm sure Harry would not take but, offense to that either because people build. Yeah. on the character. He yeah. originated it, so people yeah, yeah. build on those characters. Yeah, right? Harry did a good job mm -hmm. as a monk stuff, but I gotta say, Michael Gruber, he was, he, he was he, Michael, he was really awesome. What yeah. is your as favorite well. song in Cats? Well, I have quite a few. I really do like the song that they sing about, you know, that monk strap sing, sang about the great rumpus cat, and then in the final part of the song, they show monk strap and the rumpus cat together in the little acting scene. And um, that was one of my most favorite parts of the musical. And have you you've seen the show in person? Yes. How yes. many and times? Is it well, more well, than in once person, or? I've well in person I've seen it once, but I've seen different versions of it, like on on the internet, like on YouTube and all that stuff. And the only production of Sweeney Todd that I've seen was the was the two thousand seven movie with Johnny Depp and Alan Rickman. What did I you got to see oh, Angela. Yeah. Lansbury on Broadway, oh. Sweeney Todd. Oh, that's wow. And Lynn Carew. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty Appreciate incredible. Uh, what did you think of Cats the movie when the movie came out? Oh, you mean the 2019 version? Yeah. I thought it was kind of interesting, but <laughs> I kind of liked, you know, in some ways, I kind of like the 1998 film version a little bit better okay. and the original stage show. I mean, no offense. No. And, and I got to say, though, um, and I gotta say that um, Johnny Depp and some of those other guys who were in musicals like Cats and Sweeney Todd and and maybe some other uh -huh. shows such as Modern Family and so on, I would love to work with them as 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 a, as an actor. Yeah. And um, um, my father Daniel's he's currently working on a new movie called A Walking Miracle which is supposed to come out sometime in in May of next year. We'll look forward to that. Yeah, my uncle Steve and Uncle Billy are supposed to be in it with him. Oh, wow. great. That's going to be. Uh, That's super fantastic. cool. Yeah. And, and there was a lot of movies that came out recently this year that I really enjoyed seeing, including, uh, might if I mention a few? No, go, yeah, ahead. go ahead. Well, well, one movie that I really did enjoy seeing that came out this year was, uh, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, well, uh, I, I enjoyed seeing Black Panther 2, Wakanda mm. Forever, yeah. and, mm -hmm. um, and I'm looking forward to also seeing the new Avatar movie, Avatar 2, Way of Water, oh, yeah. Yeah. and I really did enjoy, um, uh, hold on just a second. Let me see if I can. Find I want to know if you've seen Bullet Train. I did. Yeah. Because <laughs> I thought of you the whole movie, Atticus. And the Tom. I loved that. That was. I loved that right? movie. A little. I mean. Why do you I, think of Atticus? Well, okay. There's a there's character. a character who analyzes people based on Thomas characters. Oh, the okay. whole movie. And is he's the an assassin. Joke. And and. <laughs> And the whole time, Nancy, like somebody will say something, you go, now if this were Thomas the Tank Engine, <laughs> you would be this character. You're and, a diesel. And, yes, You're a diesel. I'm looking for the diesel. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And, Why? And, I would love that. Right? But it's a yeah. very violent movie, I will say yeah. that. It's, it's a little it's, too much for me, violent-wise. I, 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 
It, it was it was a, a Quentin Tarantino kind of comedy. Yeah, yeah even though exactly. it was a little violent, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed seeing that as well as Black Adam and Black Panther 2, Wakanda Forever. And no offense to DC Comics, I like them and Marvel Comics. They're both pretty cool, but I kind of like Marvel, you know, just a, a little, little bit, bit more. Better, no offense. I think okay. DC and, will handle and, that. And also, I really do enjoy. I did enjoy the movie, the the six Jurassic movie, Jurassic World Dominion. Okay. And I gotta say, it was really awesome seeing Chris Pratt and Jeff Goldblum and Sam Neill all together. Mm -hmm. Very fun. But I gotta say, though, it's if you ever need an assistant casting director, oh, right here, right. Yeah, but I, I gotta yeah. say, it's it's unfortunate that it prob that, that 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 particular one was probably the last, the yeah. sixth and last one in, the, in in this in the Jurassic film series. Yeah, but you never know. Give it ten years, and yeah, yeah, but who yeah, knows? Yeah. They yeah. they could who make knows? another chapter. And uh, besides voice acting and like some other things, writing, drawing pictures, and so on, I'm also really good at some other like skills like when like you know for some artists who have disabilities like some actors artists out there who are like deaf i am I'm, I'm pretty good at sign language hmm. are you yeah well that's a great skill i i'm wanting to learn sign language right now so i, I might i, I might hit you up for a lesson yeah long ago in a galaxy far away i, I choreographed a version of um a, a, a variety show with people with disabilities called oh. staring back Ooh. Yeah, and we had a blind comedian, we had a quadriplegic actor, we had a deaf actress, and she taught me some choice phrases. <laughs> yeah, and, um, ah, I love it. So and, I won't show them on camera. <laughs> have you shared them with Atticus? Do you, does he know how a, to A few. I, I know one. It was just yeah, like, um, I, uh, I enjoyed the, oh shoot, the That's show and, uh, very much. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, uh, by the way, um, even though this may be a violent movie, I'm also considering seeing the Christmas movie Violent Night. Yeah. And I don't normally see rated R movies because they're kind of a little, most of them are a little too scary, but there are some that I enjoy. And I, en I enjoyed a few rated R movies, including the movie Sweetie Todd with Johnny Depp and Alan Rickman. I gotta yeah. say it was, it was the best rated R musical movie that I've ever seen. Wonderful. And, uh, by the way, um, I know a few signs too. Actually, yeah. I, I know this. This means. Uh, um, uh, I'll explain. Um, this means nice to meet you. Wonderful. It means where are you from? Born here. Birthday, and um, I know a lot of other things. And this means good. Yes. Hey. And very good. <laughs> yeah, and uh, love it. When I was a child, um, I used to have a VHS copy of a of a of a video called um, "Signing Made Easy: How to Talk to a Person Who Can't Hear," which is a a unique program for people of all ages that teaches American Sign Language. And they had it stars this famous com Canadian deaf actor Anthony Natali, who sh teaches over different three hundred words and phrases in sign language with his hands voice and with a uh, music and uh, a few years later I got a DVD copy of that same documentary uh -huh. program we and, used to um, watch Signing Time. Did you guys? Oh yeah, watch I, I've signing seen such Signing yeah. Time as well with Rachel Coleman and yeah. her friends Alex and Leah. I also saw that one too. Yeah, we used and, to watch that. And yeah. all I remember is like red. That red is like lipstick. That's all I remember. Yeah, yeah. I I, <laughs> I I I used to watch Signing Time as well and. Uh, um, and uh, I'm trying to think, uh, what other rated R movies have I seen besides Bullet Train and Sweeney Todd? Deadpool. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Deadpool. Deadpool. Love Deadpool. Deadpool's pretty funny. But I, I also really, say. but I also loved some of the other like Marvel movies that they had in like X Men, like X Men First Class, Days of Future Past, and X uh, Man Apocalypse, Dark Phoenix, and a few. I enjoyed a lot of X Men movies, and I enjoyed Spider Man. I really love Spider Man. Wonderful. Cool. Now, uh, I have no idea where we are on time. Uh, we're we're so past. It doesn't matter. I okay. know. I'm uh, so sorry. No, no, we're like we're but having a great time. We need, right. we need to do s several segments. I think exactly. With well, you all. there's I, so much to talk about. There is so much to talk about, and especially we have a we have a couple of new shows here at the Autism Network. One of them is uh, Let's Talk Movies. 
Uh, and Moira Gia Mateo and I talk movies, so sometime we'll have to have you oh, be a guest. Moira. Isn't Moira the best? Moira. Well, it turns out that she and I have like very similar, dissimilar, so we're like Siskel and Ebert, but the, the autism mom version of it. I love it. Um, and so we don't always see eye to eye on things, but we'd love to have you be a guest on it sometime. You'd be a great Atticus. guest on that, And Atticus. then we have this other podcast that I've talked to you a little bit about before that's called Stories from the Spectrum, where it's all people who identify as being neurodiverse or on the spectrum, and they have their own segments. Yeah. Uh, so like Spencer Hart interviews celebrities. You could do movie reviews for us, and we would love it. Or whatever Shannon's else uh, okay. son, Jem, did a segment on my son, Wyatt, and he's Yeah. Hard. Speaking of which, I also would love to interview, like, some famous, like, celebrities and some wow. other... We have a studio, there. and we'd love to work with you to make that happen. We want to foster artists that are neurodiverse and help them, you know, because you got to do your apprentice years, right? Wait, and wait, we want to make a like a, a sandbox where people can play and sort of find their thing, and then maybe you go out and do your own podcast later on. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, Shannon. Did did you say foster artists? Yes. Yeah. So, as in, like, a, as in, be a place where we them. help encourage you to find what you want to do as an artist. Because there's a certain amount of time. I mean, I'm still figuring out well who I want to be when I grow up. Me too. But uh, you know, you need a safe place to be where people encourage you, and that's what we want to do here: is be a safe place where we're encouraging young artists like yourself, who yeah. have a point of view and should have a microphone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You know? yeah. And uh, and they could be artists who are young artists who are around my age, um, who are like either in their twenties, like me, twenty six, or they could even be teenage artists. Or we don't. We like haven't put that. an age on it. We've we um, at all. We've we've just said you know who is interested in doing this, and um, and we do have a little bit of grant money so that there's a little bit of pay for you in it. Um, do you see his eyes light up? Uh, yeah, I, I'm amazed though. A lot of times, I think that's a big selling point, and for a lot of folks on the spectrum, this is not a big selling point. I've had yeah. one artist who said to me, "Can you pay me less because I, I have other programs that I get money, and if you pay me more, then I don't get that money." That to me is a bummer, and we need reform. Yeah, no, on that's it. true. Yeah, yeah. but um, but I get excited about the fact that we do. You know, that we're we're not just asking you to do work; we're asking you to do work and get paid for it. Yeah. Yeah, true. Oh, by the way, something just came to me. Yes. Um, another um, another sitcom movie that I really did enjoy, yeah. which was also rated R, was um, Old School with uh, Luke oh. Wilson, Will oh, Ferrell, yeah. and <laughs> Jeremy Piven, and uh, um, I think Vince Vaughn was in that. And I know, and you, you saw that first at first with your dad, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did. Yeah, and um, but I also enjoyed the PG-13 movies, Spider-Man movies, and X-Men, like some of the other X-Men movies, and other action Sky High, Spy Kids, and so on. I love Sky High. That's one of those movies that I, I missed at some point, and then I watched it with my kids. Yeah, uh, Kurt Russell and um, Kelly Preston. Kelly Preston. And, uh, really good. But I've not heard about uh, it until I watched Kevin yeah, Heffernan watched it and... Uh, uh, Unsung. Uh, her fabulous movie. I bet Wyatt would like it a lot. Yeah. Well, in any case, because we, we are going to have to eventually end this, but I, I was wondering if both of you could say a little bit about things that you would like viewers to know about the journey. Just maybe one thing, one bit of advice that you'd like to give or one thing that you want people to know about you, um, leaving it kind of wide or open. Or about autism. Or about autism. What, what you, would you, you like people to know? You mentioned something to me earlier. Um, all right, but why don't you go first and give some advice? What do I want people to know? Yeah. Oh, you, ca you caught me. I have so many things <laughs> I want people to know. Um, don't, <laughs> don't do this alone. Mm. It's, it's really okay. Um, it's a journey. It's a, it's a club that not... I've said this before. It's... Um, it's not a club that I would have signed up for in college, uh, saying, I, ooh, I want to be part of that, or I want to be part of that. But it's a club that I am a proud member of and 
love the people that I have met in it, including those autistic people, those parents. It's, it's such a great community. And for them, I always know with whom I'm having the pleasure mm. with them, yeah. you know? Yeah. I, it's, it's what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. And Amen to get, that. get some advocacy and be on your way. It's, it's not a bad journey. There you go. And Atticus, what do you want to say? <clears throat> well, um, well for, 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 for all the viewers out there, one thing I'd like to say, um, if you're autistic and, and you sometimes have trouble with a few things, ask your parents if maybe they can help you. Like when I was younger, being autistic, I sometimes I couldn't really understand people when they sometimes talk over each other and all that stuff. And I would tell them, you know, like if, if one's talking, then another interrupts and ask a question. Then they're when they're about answering, when they're when they're before they can finish answering, and they get interrupted with another question, and then and then you know, and and so on, and so forth. Um, I, I I I sometimes tell them, guys, I can't understand all of you at once when you talk at the same time. So if so, if you guys out there, if there, if if you're kind of a autistic person who can't understand. Group, many people when they're all talking at once, please tell them that you can't tell them that that you can't really understand them, that you can't really understand what they're saying when they're all talking at once. And another word of advice: um, if you need any help with learning certain skills, please ask for it ask your parents grandparents or any other members of family or friends to help you with certain particular needs that you might need to help you throughout life as you grow there, there was one other thing that you, you want to say what was it that you wanted to that was beautiful by the way yeah, that was was. Gorgeous. what was it that you wanted to say uh, let people on the planet know about people who are autistic well having autism it's not it, being autistic having autism it's nothing to be scared of and it's not like something that would like that would like that would cause you to get a lot of like you know sort of like immediate medical attentions it just means that you know you 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 would you it just would cause you to learn things in a different way than some non-autistic artist would and I, I sometimes learn things kind of differently than some than most non-autistic people do and I learn things by a lot of a lot of listening things and also like watching things seeing how it, seeing how it's done yeah Amazing. Great advice. So when it comes to learning, I'm I'm fifty percent visual, fifty percent auditory, and um, I uh, um and uh. What about kinesthetic? Getting it in your body, does that help? Uh, yeah, a little bit of, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it does, yeah. Amazing. And Thank you for those insights, Atticus. Yeah. Isabella, when I look at you, I think of one of my favorite quotes from Brene Brown, which is, one day you will tell the story of what you overcame, and it will be someone else's survival guide. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here mm -hmm. today. Thank you both. And thank you to our, our audience for this first time, uh, first maiden voyage back yes. in the studio for Let's Talk Autism, oh. and our other guests as well. This has been really fun. Uh, tomorrow on the show, we have an episode of Stories from the Spectrum, and then we will be back on Monday with a whole bunch of uh, wonderful live shows. We want to remind you, if you haven't already, that we have been giving away free tickets. We had uh, a set of free tickets, and there might still be some available. You can, for the... At Asner Family so Center. No, no, actually, that as well. But for the gala happening oh. this Sunday for the Ed Asner Family Center, the table read of It's a Wonderful Life, we had 25 tickets. I don't know if they're all gone, but you can write to milo at teafc.org 
and see if there are still tickets available. I know we were given 25 and there was the potential for more, so definitely uh, write for that. And then the following Sunday is when we have Sensitive Santa, okay. but, but you should be registering for those tickets right now. Go to Eventbrite, put in Sensitive Santa Event 2022, and you'll find it and can register. Yeah, oh, and, um, one yes. other thing I'd like to say, yes. speaking of like the Edison Family Center, you mentioned a table yes. read of It's a Wonderful Life and all that yes. stuff. Well, listen, I just want to tell the viewers out there, Matt Asner um, and his wife Nava Paskowitz Asner, the two founders of that center, they're very old friends of mine. And uh, I, I also know some of their other friends like... Um, uh, like us. Like, like you guys, <laughs> like you two, and, and also like uh, I know Milo Nichols. Yes, and, um, Milo's great. <clears throat> and Aviva. And, yes, and, and also Will, Max, and Wolf, and... Eddie and and so on. The whole family. And they would people would love watching the table read of It's a Wonderful oh. Life. You would really enjoy it. So try to get those tickets. Absolutely, and that helps support things that happen at the center, which we all have benefited from. So. And and you know some of those actors who were in previous table reads of It's a Wonderful Life, and some of the other famous actors who are going to be in this upcoming one. I'd also love to work with in my career. Like Absolutely. Brendan Fraser. Yeah, putting it out He's there. He's going to be there. Right? Yeah, Brendan Fraser, J.K. Simmons, uh, Richard Kind, Tom Bergeron, Mandy Patinkin, mm -hmm. Martin Sheen, Lou Diamond Phillips, George Went, and wow, you know, what a list! Yeah, all amazing people who are doing it or have done it before. So check that out, you guys. Go to the Ed Asner Family Center dot org and and you can see about it, but if you want to ask for free tickets, Milo at TEAFC.org. We're out of time. We We're are. Right past time. Thanks for being here with us. We'll see you tomorrow. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me. And yourselves a hug from me. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>